Hi everyone, welcome back. We're continuing on. We're on rows 27. So we have 27, 28, 29, 30. Four more. Okay, let's get going into this. Same board, same thing. I just wiped off my palette here from this last practice one. And Hansa yellow, yellow oxide, burnt sienna, naphthol red light, pine green, thalo blue, um, red violet, quinacridone violet, and white. And I do show a lot of other things. Um, you know, a lot of other colors. We have 32 pure pigments into the line, and I show you a lot of those with other things. Uh, one thing I do want to just kind of reiterate here is with the 30-day challenge, what I've done is picked out some of our painted simply. These are painted simply techniques that I use in some of my books and my videos and my online classes, and I pulled a few of them into this 30-day challenge so you practice them and you repeat them and you repeat them and you repeat them until you own it and I know a lot of you want to see other things like rolled petals and can you show us this type of flower and this and this and this I paint all of those but that's not what a challenge about is about a challenge is about taking that concept and practicing it and practicing it and practicing it okay I show all these other things in other videos and books and lessons and everything like that but on a challenge we're here to practice these particular concepts of this type of rose so much so that until we own it and we become very very good at it that is the very best way to learn them and then you can step out and do all these other things but if you paint a couple roses and then go change and go do a different one and then change and go do a different one you'll never really own the rose and I want you all to own the rose okay all right let's go into this so let's paint one angled up this way this time and let's go back to that one uh, background that's really that sells so very well for me it's kind of a light violety kind of background and especially if I put it on this slightly yellowed type of background here just do it just seems that just everyone just likes that really well sells really well I'll put a bit of water into this I'm gonna go just a touch more blue that's it right there so I'm kind of like a little light blue violet and I'm gonna lighten it up quite a bit it just breaks up this uh, this background really nice puts this nice violet and you get this nice warm cool through it and uh, so many, I mean, I paint this a lot and, and it seems like every time I paint this and we put the painting of this, um, you know, up onto the online gallery, they always sell really fast, really well. Because I, I think it's the warm cool more than anything else. You know, put that brush away and soften some of this, pull some of this back out a bit, let some of that other um, warm color come back through. And then we'll go grab our brush, eight or a 10 here and we'll go to a white with some of this color this violets into it so I'll start out with a white I'm gonna gray down uh, the color here first a little green and a little red sometimes a little blue a little violet into this red here we'll make a nice gray here yeah it's kind of a nice gray there color and we'll add just a bit of this violet to it here too that's a nice color nice gray and that'll neutralize the violet in this area. We'll put a larger rose right out into that area. I know that's a little difficult to see, um, but uh, we'll just kind of just put our area of our rose. Now I'm gonna take some of this quinacridone and a little bit of this blue, and I'm gonna pump some of this around, just, just push it around and model it around. We'll do almost like a lilacs or something with this coming out here like this up onto this side here just let these get really modeled and out like this and down and push this out just like that just push it out and around okay and here yeah, like that just let those colors come out we'll push some colors like some some lilacs or something I love li painting lilacs and stuff into floral compositions we we'll add a little bit different color here. We'll go a little bit deeper, richer. Put a bit of that through here in a couple of areas. That's kind of nice. Now let's take some of this color, maybe a bit more onto the red-violet side. Let's come up here inside of our, our rose, come down about a third, and push that up and around like that. 
Okay, smaller little movements up and around. Let's go ahead and drop in the bowl of the rose. You can see a little different, a little different setup than I've done before. Okay. And sometimes I, I do all of this just to get myself really loose with color. I'm going to go a little red violet and a little quinacridone violet. We'll deepen that nice throat of that rose there. Right up like that. It puts a deeper dark right down here on the cool bottom side of the bowl. Don't go all the way up and around. Just right down under the bottom side here. Matter of fact, we'll push this mostly to the bottom side of the rose here. Just like that. And that works. And I'll just... Uh, I just dipped in a little extender. You could use water. Just get some of that violet out of there for just a minute because I'm going to go grab some yellow oxide. I'll put a little extender with it just for sliding. I'm just going to warm the side of it here. We could add a little warmth here and there to some of the other colors right out here. And then I'm going to come right into my grays and to some of this warmth. We'll pick up some nice heavy white grade model it down here and we'll go ahead and strike the front of this rose here like that and uh, maybe a petal or two here coming out and around here just little bits little ideas of petals just use that little corner to draw anything to make it more precise if you want right like that We'll build a little more color here into the front, right up in here, and push to the roundness here. Gray it down, even cool it down a bit. As you come around to this side, the cooler side of this rose, pulling down, pushing it into the round shape of the of the uh, bowl there. Just, just like you know what you're doing, right? Push that bowl shape. Now you can close all the way up and around. You could do small petals that, you know, kind of close the rows up and around. You could put a, just a few little color marks here to make it look like other petals coming out there. That's up to you. There's, there's just all kinds of ways in which I create, you know, the centers of the roses and stuff here. So I'm just grabbing a little water here to make the color work a little better. I'm going to go almost to pure white right out here. And I'm going to come right out here. I'm just going to strike across here that main petal that's going to be there. Now, its movement's going this way, and I want to get it to go in and out. So I'll just use my finger here to push in and out a bit of that. You could also use the brush pulling in now. But see, that little bit of push, just a couple pushes, gets that motion to it. But sometimes with a big rose, if you strike across one way like that, and then I'll grab uh, just a little water on my finger here and then use that to push in and out like this. You get a much different looking petal because the petal has two movements to it. One pulling this way and one pulling this way. And it works pretty nice. Here, we can pull that edge in just a bit there like that. But you could use this to build all kinds of little different edges to a rose to a rose petal, like that. And we can gray this down, blue it, gray it down, here to the other side over here so they're softer, grayer, so you see a difference in them, here, just like that. Some of these right out here like this, you can pull out, push in, pull out, here. Okay, they're pretty roses, the, the, the violet to gray roses like this are real pretty to, to paint and to learn because they, they, uh, they require a lot of uh, warm and cool, the warm and cool colors, which is, you know, as an artist, which is really hard to see. You know, I always tell my students, it's re that's really hard to see. It took me a long time to, to really learn warm and cool. And, but if you paint these quite a bit like this, you will learn them. Now let's continue to build more light right up here at the front of this one, 
right up here. Now there's a little bit of quinacridone on my finger picked up, and I'm just going to work through that. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to work through it, covering some of it up. Sometimes little things like that happen, and I just work through it. Now, if, I can, if it gets to me too much, I can just neutralize it with a little bit of yellow here. But it just adds a nice little color into that rose, too. So sometimes little mistakes work really well. Let's close up another little petal right here. Pull that down. Close that up a bit like that. All kinds of different ways you can set petals in. I'm going to set a little bit more of a shape to this one. Here, pull that in. Push those together. Let's pull out, coming out this way, to this big one here. Push in and out, rounding it up and into the bowl. Like that, that sets shape. And see all that shadow that's right in there. Gives me all kinds of room to do more things to the rose you know more petals and stuff like that if I want to have to this rose here push a little gray for the bowl there and let's just let's kick a little bit of that gray right here to divide these petals up just a bit and paint for movement paint for movement Here's a little edge. Let's just angle this petal down just a bit. So I love that um, petal edging technique when I'm drawing real soft roses. I like to take that nice edge and I like to just use that edge and that chisel to draw a petal where I want. Then I can put a little softer gray or something along that edge to thin it out or clean it up or something like that. I'm in control of it, but I like that little bit of an edge there to control that petal. And maybe we'll pull a little light down just a bit here. Movement, put a little bit of gray. You can lift off from the bottom up to help preserve that bowl shadow right there. Let's take some of this gray here, a little extender with that. And Continue on a petal here onto this side. Maybe refine this one a bit, coming out this way, like that. We'll get some additional grays here, cooler, onto the bowl here, like that. Build up the front, maybe a bit more white. That's what's coming at us towards us right here is that white but always always find that bolt sometimes I'll come back and put some cool color into it and lift off like that to help preserve that bowl but always always preserve that bowl let's take just a bit of the cool with a corner here so that we can draw a few petals in on that cool side Maybe one right up here. You can place petals any way you want. And like I said, you can go grab some um, photos of roses to see how they, you know, how the petals and stuff fold. But I don't copy. I never copy. I use it for inspiration or ideas of how some of the roses and stuff come together. I'm going to uh, push a little more violet, touch of blue here, right up and around inside here, maybe a touch more light. How much you do is up to you. If you decide to close off one side a little bit more like that, there, close it off a bit more, makes a different type of prettier center, see? Just close, just start using, remember that as you get into the center here, they, the petals start getting smaller and smaller. And you can just start closing them out. Use that little tiny edge of the light to really kind of set petals or the edges of your petals here. As you close up a bit, 
there it makes kind of a pretty little I think I'm going to spin this just a bit there we go take that one edge off let's build just a bit lighter right up here in the front maybe a bit more light right up here into the front we'll preserve that bowl lift off just a bit preserve that that shadowy petal there let's take just an edge of that light gray nice little petal edging technique here and draw maybe another petal right in here right like that push that into the shadow or lift off with your brush either way it makes kind of a pretty rose maybe one more little light right down in here like this right down towards that bowl and uh, find that bowl coming through right there lots of different ways but just make sure that you see that bowl that's the main important part of the rose is that bowl coming up and through let me just pull a little more light down on that there we go makes kind of a pretty little rose different kind of different shape to it and uh, then we'll just take some of our violets here blue violets and red violets and we're just going to do a few little smaller petals here. And we'll have some going to the blue violet side, some going to the red violet side here. As we just indicate a few little blossomy petals here. Sometimes I like those colors and I just go ahead and add those into like the rose right there. I'm always looking, even though I, when I start to make colors, I'm always looking back to my rose to see if something like that would enhance the rose as well. And I like that. Just a bit of that in there. And it carries the, the violet colors down into that rose as well. And this rose, since I've been using the white so thick, it's so thick with paint, that you know if you get it too thick and if you don't let it dry up enough it gets a little difficult to paint because everything keeps keeps sliding on you so if that starts to happen just let it tack up a little bit that's why I like the acrylics so let it tack up a little bit you know if it's keep it too wet everything just disappears on you and uh, it gets harder to paint let's put a little bit of light movement there just thick white like that, that's good. Now let's keep going with these guys here. A little bit more of our lights here. And I like a little bit of violets into them. So I just start putting out some like blue violets and some red violets here. Get a little lighter, a little more red violet. And I paint them several times to get some variety to them. But they look kind of kind of neat when you, as you're building them up. Of course, in here by the rose, you can get them quite light. You can get some lights into them. And get a lighter blue here. And just model them up. Model some of these colors pick up some so you just start to you know you just do the impressions back here you know down here and then as we get up into the the front of these we'll get even lighter so I'll build a lighter one right up here prettier little turned light one maybe a bit more red violet into it slightly different always change a little bit lighter onto that one. Slightly different color. Let's put just a touch of that into that one. Here. There's that one. 
little bit more blue there a little different and the other little colors just kind of pretty to have those just kind of showing up now we'll um I'll use some of this with some greens a little burnt sand I love that burnt sand and green but we'll add some of these violet colors into that and let's shape down this rose just a bit so I'm going to take down some of the outside edges of the rose just a bit small it down just a bit sometimes in your painting it gets a little big and that's not a hard thing to uh, get rid of you just use some background color and negative paint it out or if I want to small down the edge of this petal right there and take some of the the greens out you know I might uh, take a bit more of this dark let's add a little bit of blue to this and uh, push this a bit darker right up in here see how that smalls down the whole look of the rose we can add just a touch back in here to get some greens from our and see that just smalls everything down here small down just a bit here take some of this out like that shape up our rose a bit this is the negative painting of it I, I, I love the negative painting technique because you can really change the whole feel of a rose you know how a, a rose goes and uh, let's take a bit of the green in this and add some of our stem out here maybe some other little smaller leaves and stuff coming off of the lilacs here just like that just quick little things colors you can go deeper for more contrast more contrast you know a little darker a little more contrast and uh, use that around some of your ilex here and see how it starts lifting the, the roses here pushing some of those around there it's kind of nice um, like everything I think I want to have a, a little bit more of a shadow let's get a little bit of blue into that a little bit more cooler violety shadow here on this side of my rose to go with those violets a little bit more so I'm going to push that in and soften that here with some light pulling down through that just like that see how that just puts in a little bit more of the violet so you can just shoot it right in there like that and then take some of your light and paint into it and you carry that color right into your rose. Now you can go back out here and uh, since we negative painted down a bit and put some back petals back on here put on the edges again. Remember if you also paint out into that green a little bit and pull back you get that lovely transparency that we've done before so we'll pull some of that right in there. That's nice. Pull some of that right in here like that. Just small up that bolt just a bit more. And uh, pull out a little bit more of a, a light there. Just a little bit of movement here. Just a little bit more movement here like that. So sometimes you get these violets on and your, your, your idea of your rose changes just a bit. And um, let's come by with some of that light off of these violets and or these lilacs, whatever you want to, small little blossom flowers. Lighten them up again, right up into this area, small little ones. It's not bad for a little 30 minute painting, you know, to do something like this because they look kind of 
kind of pretty, kind of nice. Let them kind of fade away back to there. You can do some just quick little color marks and stuff back here. Maybe there's some fading away back out through here. I may want to have a you know, more distinct little, or a couple more little stems right in here. I'll push those around. Take some yellow oxide on the corner of your brush. Tap into a few of those centers like that. Just a few here. Touch into a little Hansa under the corner and tap into a little bit just to give a little bit of a motion uh, to those. You can Sometimes I like to take like a little quinacridone and push a little touch of the quinacridone violet underneath them. That's, you know, that increases their contrast, carries some of the color. Nice little thing to do. You can shape up, I think I will shape up one light leaf over on this side. So I'll go more of a yellowy green, some hot sun, some yellow, some pine. And We'll push a lighter green leaf out over to this side. Maybe push one right up over here as well. And then just a touch of dark. You can touch it with your finger, but maybe just a touch of dark to suggest the movement to some of those leaves. And I'm going to leave those not, you know, not too detailed like that. Just kind of, that's about enough. A nice little painting here. We'll just walk some of this on down. Just a little brush dance there. Walk some of that movement there. And uh, kind of call that. It's kind of a nice, little different, a little more casual rose and some little violets like that. Just, no, lilacs like that. A little bit, um, a little bit different. Kind of fun. Um, but don't, don't don't be afraid to go back and after you get those violets on there to restate that uh, bowl of the rose and work that you know your main rose work it several times you can do that and you saw that was even pretty much dry right in there when I did that but if you want to soften anything out dip your finger in a little water and push that through it's kind of nice to know what you know some of the things you you can do so many of my students once they get that rose set they're afraid to go back and touch it again to me it's a painting it's paint i can go back and i can fix anything they're all so i will push to try new things that's what i try to do all right all right hope you enjoyed it let's go over and paint 28.